back, everyone. Um, this is our RTS series, episode one. Um, I've decided to, I did. I know I did a vote and I think the consensus was most people wanted an isometric series next, but um, I've decided to do RTS because um, it's a little easier for me. And I think for isometric, I, I've thought about it a lot. I think if you want to do isometric projects, it would be better to do in 3D. I think 2D is very difficult and not optimal. Um, while it is possible, I I think I would rather save that for 3D later on in the series or later on in the channel. So eventually I want to get to 3D. Um, I'm going to have to learn. I'm still learning it myself. So once I learn it a little better, um, I'll make a 3D isometric series most likely. In fact, I might even combine this with uh, the RTS series. So I might even make a RTS isometric series. I actually thought about doing that for 2D, but again, it's a little too complicated and it's not optimal to do it in 2D. So um, I'm going to create this project. Uh, I've already set everything up, made a folder, but this is the settings I'm gonna do. So let's create a project. Um, let me show you real quick what we're gonna be doing. It's gonna be super easy. Basically, we have an empty scene and we're just now going to be able to draw a rectangle. So in the future, we'll be able to select things, right? So in an RTS, usually we wanna be able to select objects, right? Um, so this is Godot 4, so keep in mind, if you are using Godot 3, um, some things will be slightly different. Uh, I'll try to point them out as I go, but this is Godot 4, uh, it is in beta, so th some things might change. Um, one thing, so there's a few things we want to change in our project settings, actually. The first thing, and this is actually important, it's basically changed from import. Instead of for our texture, if we are now doing 2D things, um, we now want to change our canvas default texture filter from linear to nearest. So the default is near or linear, but we want nearest. And this will now allow us to, by default, have things pixelated. So let's delete that. Let's create a 2D scene. We're just going to create a world, save it. And then we're going to create a few other things. We're going to create a canvas layer right off the bat. Um, this canvas layer is going to allow us to do certain things. And we're just going to name it UI because in the future we will have UI, right? So Let's capitalize it in the scene. Um, let's go to our world and let's add our UI. And then let's just play so we can select our current world. We have nothing in there, obviously, but uh, let's add some things. So there's two things we're gonna add. Um, let's go through the options. So the first one that's not an option is camera 2D. So I want you to add camera 2D. Um, and the second one that's not really an option or that is an option is your actual selection. So I've decided to use a panel However, there are other things you can use. You can use, realistically, you can use anything with a rectangle. So we'll go into the code, in, but you can use texture rectangle, panel. Uh, you can even use label text, technically. Um, you can use color rectangle, container. You can actually use anything because, let's actually add a panel for now. And then and, and let's look at the um, layout. So the, all the transform stuff is now in our layout. And I wanna, Point something out. The size used to be called the property used to be called rect size, rect uh, underscore size. And if you're using uh, Godot three, this would still be the case. Um, let me move my camera to the bottom right. And let me just adjust the size of the bill real quick. Oops. There we go. I just want to hide my bar a little bit. All right, sorry about that. Okay, so now you should be able to see most of the stuff. Oops, let me move that back and I'm gonna move my camera a little to the left. There, so now you can't see the left side of my screen. Um, but yeah, so the size, in order to change it, we just call size now. And this is actually for almost for, for almost everything, I believe. I haven't gone through all the nodes and looked at it, but I believe all the different transforms on the size, there's no size here, is now instead of rec size, it'll be just be size. And same thing for position, same thing for scaling. I think they, I think I actually like this because before you would get errors if you just wrote dot size, um, which we'll do in a second. So let's add a camera, let's change this to just camera and add a script to it. And it'll just be camera.g. Let's actually, no, sorry. Let's actually organize this a bit because we're gonna have, this is a project. So we're gonna add a lot of things. So let's add a, folder called UI. Let's put our UI stuff in there. 
one. Well, this, let's uh, reset that and put our script down. Okay, um, camera, and we're gonna delete all this. All right, and now we're going to have a few different um, variables, quite a few actually. So the first one we're gonna have is um, mouse position. I'm gonna call this vector two, and there you go. And there's now a few different things that Vector 4 does, which is pretty interesting. I'm not going to go through them, actually, because it's a bit annoying. But yeah, and we're going to make another one called global. Global. And then I'm just going to copy paste a few different variables that we're going to need. All right, and then I'll just read them out. So we have start. So this is going to be the start of our dragging. This is going to be the start vector of our dragging. This is going to be the end, and then same thing, end. And then this is going to tell us if we are actually dragging. Um, and then we're going to have signals. The signals we won't be using in this video, but they will be later on. So you can add the signals for now, or you don't have to. It doesn't really matter. Um, it won't affect our project for this uh, series. All right, or for this episode, sorry. So the first thing we're going to have is a function called draw area. And this is going to be a function that allows us to actually draw the, the panel, right? So the first thing we want to do, I'm not actually sure. I, I, I need to look into this more, but on ready there is no longer a thing in Godot 4. I'm not sure why. I don't know how to preload a node. I'll look into it. Um, but yeah. If, if you know, actually, put it in the comments down below, because I actually have no clue. Um, it's hard to find because Video 4 is still new. So for now, we're just going to do get node um, panel, which we have to actually drag in. And then we're just going to say size equals, and I'm going to copy paste this because it's quite a bit. Vector absolute value of the start dot x minus the end of x uh, dot x. And then the same thing for the y value. So what we're doing is we're going to essentially, let's, let's draw this out. So once I click on one point, I'm going to drag out this way, right, to this point. So let's say this point is uh, 2 and 2, right? And then this point is 0 and 0, right? That means we want our rectangle to now be 2 by 2. Right? And how do we do that? We say 2 minus 0, 2, and then 2 minus 0, 2. Right? So that's how we draw out our rectangle, essentially. So we have to actually manually draw out our rectangle. And we're getting the absolute value because if by some chance, no, not by some chance, our, our mouse position is usually in, in um, floats. So for example, it would be 1.9 or something. It would, it would be a float, right? It would be 1.0, 1. 1.0, 1. whatever. Um, however, we want the absolute value of it. We want it to be positive. We want it to be um, a whole number. All right, and then, and that's why we're also doing dot x and dot y, by the way. Um, so now, let's get our position uh, vector two. I'll be honest. I think one thing I need, I want them to change is when you like press vector two or type in vector two, it the uh, semicolons don't pop up, which is kind of annoying, but it's okay. Um, and then we're gonna set our position. So our position dot x. Is going to be equal to the minimum of start v. That's what's wrong. And end v dot x. So the same thing for here, dot x. All right, and then we're just going to copy paste that. Oops. And we're going to have our dot y instead. So we're also going to set the position of our rectangle. So we, we have to change the size, but we also want to set the position of our um, New rectangle that we just draw, drawn, right? And then to do that, uh, I'm just going to copy paste this. I'm going to say our panel dot position equal position. That's it. And then we'll just say um, the size is going to be times equals to in s because what we're going to do is we're going to pass through area s equals true. Because if we, later on, what we're going to want to do is see if drawing area is false or true. Um, because let me go back to our play. So here, when I click, I draw. We can now draw a rectangle. But when I let go, I want to say the draw rectangle is false. right? So I, wanna, I want it to disappear. right? So 
So that's what this line is doing, essentially. All right, um, now we're going to go to input. I had a lot of fun doing input because input has changed quite a bit. Um, you used to be able to say event dot um, index something equals button left, something like this in Godot 3. Um, Godot 4 no longer has that. I have absolutely no idea what they did with it. Um, I'll look into it maybe if we need it. But for now, uh, mm -hmm. we can go move around this by just going to input map and we add left click. Let's add that. We'll add an action, just left click, and then just add that. All right, awesome. So now let's add our function and do input event. And then we say if event is input event, what is it? Mouse. I'll just event mouse. There we go. That's it. Um, and then we're just going to update our mouse position. So mouse position equals event dot position, and then say mouse position global position is also equal to get global mouse position. So this is going to just give us two different positions. The reason why we're doing this is because there's different scalings depending on the zoom of our camera. The the reason why we put this in a canvas layer is now because Let's do a few things actually. Let's change this to zero, zero, and let's make this current. No, that's it. Um, the reason we're doing this is because if our later on we're going to add zoom into our camera, and if our camera is zoomed in, the position depending on the zoom changes. However, the global position, because it's in a canvas layer, does not change. It is still global. It is global dependent on the actual world, right? The world positions. Um, so we need these two positions to. Make sure we're doing things right. All right, next thing I'm going to do is add a process function. Uh, I have to actually type it out. I, I kind of want them to change that back. Process delta, there we go. And then all we're going to do is say if input dot is action just pressed, left click, then we're going to do something. And then we're also going to, let's just pass for now. And then we're also going to check or if we just, let's just release, there we go. So we wanna see if we press down and then when we press up, right? So that's how we draw a rectangle. All right, so um, in our press down, all we have to do is just update a few things, right? So we want to just say start equals uh, mouse position. And then we say start B equals mouse, position, sorry, this one's actually global, and then this one, and then we'll just say is dragging, oops, dragging equals true. I didn't say it's equal, I just put a space, I don't know why. All right, and then we're just going to copy paste all this, put it in here, and say, uh, sorry, and then we're gonna change it to end, end, oops, ah, change that to end, and then we'll say is dragging equals false, because we are no longer dragging, right? And then in our in our action pressed, we're going to have a function called is, no, sorry, outside of it, we're going to have an is, if is dragging. What are we going to do? Well, we want to update our rectangle. So we just call the draw area function, right? And then we're going to say end equals I'll actually just copy paste these two lines right here. So we're just going to update our mouse position on the end and the mouse position. So the reason why we're doing this is because uh, it might error actually, so let's not do that. Um, in our game here, oops. so when I click, I can now draw. However, as I'm moving my mouse, I want to continuously be updating the, the rectangle, right? I don't want to just click and then end and then draw a rectangle. I want to update that rectangle as I'm dragging. Right, so as I'm dragging my mouse, we want to like draw, right? Okay, um, and next thing I'm going to do uh, is in our left click, when we release, we want to see if our start B dot is, uh, what is it? Distance to, that's the function. I'm not sure if this changed, but from Godot 3 to Godot 4, but uh, in Godot 4, it 
it can also is distance too. And I'll just say mouse position is greater than 20. And we're going to do all this. But we're also going to do draw area false. And then we're also going to emit signal uh, area selected. Let's actually just copy this so we don't get an error. So this later on, this doesn't do anything right now, but later on, uh, this will allow us to tell us the area that has been selected. Okay, and then we're also going to do an else statement uh, if the distance isn't uh, greater than 20. And then we'll say, we'll just do end equals start is regain equals false. And then we're just going to draw area false as well. Okay, let's, I don't know what that means. Let's just play and see what happens. There we go. There's our rectangle. Then we can now draw on our screen. Let's just change our panel a little bit. So there's things I want to do. Let's go to, let's close all this. Let's go to theme override. Give it a flat box. Let's make it black again, or like grayish. And we're going to change the modulate a bit to like half. I'm going to go to border. I'm going to make it two. Now let's do three. And color, obviously we want to blend a little bit. Yeah, that's a good color. I think that's fine. And then we can do chord radius. We can do like, ah, let's do two. Let's not do it too big. Just to smooth it out a little bit. So now when I draw, it looks slightly nicer. So it's not super sharp. It is pretty sharp. And it also has a little border. And eventually, let's just add something in right away. Um, let me import the things I need. So let's close that. I think it's no nope, wrong one. Let me close that now. Let's go here and let's import all the things I need. It went into the wrong folder, so let's re import that. There you go. Um, so I imported a bunch of things. I'll, I'll, again, I'll put these in the description down below. Um, but let's just put something in our world so we have a reference. Um, so as you can see, by the way, it's now pixelated because we changed it in the default settings. So let's play. And now I can select and it looks pretty neat. And you can still see the things that are selected, right? So it's not completely modulated. Um, let's do one more thing. Let's test one more thing. So in our camera, later on, what we'll want to do is zoom, right? So we can do, let's do three. There we go. So now we are zoomed in, let's save, and it should zoom in. But my rectangle still works, right? This is because we are using our mouse position event plus the actual global position, OK? Um, so later on, we'll add, I think next episode, we'll add Zoom. And then we'll also, I'm not sure if we'll add characters yet, but we'll, we'll see. So I'll have to, yeah, I'll have to do all this. But anyways, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this series, this ser um, episode. This episode was a bit different. Um, usually, I do a bit more theoretical things, kind of. Uh, in this episode, it was a bit more drawing and technical things. Uh, I hope you kind of learned a little few things on how to draw. I think most of the drawing comes from the actual function here, draw area. So as long as you understand this, I think it, you're fine. The rest of it is mostly just setting all the positions and playing around with it. Um, most of this comes from testing. So I would test like, okay, get print the mouse position, print this, print that. And I just kind of play around with it and everything. But this, this as long as you understand what's happening here, then you're fine. Um, but yeah, that's it. Uh, I hope you guys learned something. Again, subscribe, uh, like, comment, share, etc. Um, again, I also have a Patreon. Uh, you can consider pledging to my Patreon if you want. However, you don't have to. Um, I will continue posting videos for free, of course. Um, I will say, um, what was I saying? Um, they do help me make more videos. And I will say also for this series, um, I will be uploading a bit less frequently uh, because it's going to take me a bit more time to do each episode. Uh, but I hope you guys are going to enjoy this series. I think it'll be fun. I think I don't think there's anything else like this on YouTube, which will be cool to see. Uh, so I'm excited to make a full RPG series with you, or not RPG, um, RTS series. Um, I, I, yeah, so yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.